GLP-1 drugs cause optic nerve stroke? This is a question that I've seen talked about on social media by other providers, whether it be doctors who prescribe these medications like weight loss doctors and also some other eye doctors. But I feel like it's finally time for me to weigh in on this topic as a neuro-ophthalmologist. I see eye stroke every single week in my practice. GLP-1 has been around for quite some time initially used to treat diabetes, but now we know that they are very effective at weight loss. And basically GLP stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, and these drugs basically stimulate the receptor to make people feel satiated. And so they modulate hormones, make people feel full, so they end up eating less. And that's why it's helpful for diabetics to help control their blood sugar, but it's also great for weight loss. And there's so many on the market now, Ozempic, Wagovi, Monjaro, Terzepatide, optic nerve stroke. There are different types of optic nerve strokes, but the one we're most concerned about is something called N-A-I-O-N, non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. Non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. Try saying that five times, I challenge you. But basically, this is a rare type of optic nerve stroke. It happens in up to maybe 10 people per 100,000. It's really not common at all. But when it happens, it can cause significant vision loss, central loss as well as peripheral vision loss. And it tends to happen in certain people. Number one, people who have an anatomic predisposition. We call this an anatomically crowded optic nerve, also known as disc at risk, meaning that it's at risk for lack of oxygen. Another is sleep apnea. So for many people who develop optic nerve stroke, we screen them for sleep apnea and lo and behold, they snore at night, they stop breathing, that causes lack of oxygen getting to the optic nerve. Other risk factors, age. The older someone is, the higher the risk. It tends to happen in people above the age of 50, but I've seen people in their 40s and late 30s with NAI when if they also have other risk factors dehydration, anemia, diabetes, or high blood pressure, or vascular disease. But all in all, it's pretty rare. Unfortunately, there's no cure. There's no effective treatment. Let's put the two together, GLP-1 drugs and NAION. So the initial paper that came out raising this association was out of Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary. They did a retrospective chart review. They found that there was a percentage of people on these drugs who also developed NAION. Now again, it was retrospective. Since then, there have been a few more papers published. There was a large set that was published in 2024 in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. With that paper, they did again a retrospective chart review of over almost 17,000 charts and they found that yes, Patients with poorly controlled diabetes and patients with obesity were more at risk for having optic nerve stroke. Now, those are the two conditions these drugs are used for, so no surprise there. It all boils down to the question, are there certain patients in whom we should not recommend these drugs because they're at risk for optic nerve stroke? And I would say, Yes, as a neuro-ophthalmologist, there are certain patients in whom I would not recommend going on these drugs. Who are these people? Well, first of all, if a patient has a small cup to disc ratio, a disc at risk with a cup to disc ratio of less than 0.3, I would be a little bit more cautious. But it's not just that, it's not just the anatomic risk. If they also have sleep apnea or they're at risk for sleep apnea, they're using CPAP or BiPAP or they use an oral device to keep their airway open at night, I would not put them on these drugs. And then finally, if somebody has really poorly controlled diabetes that may put them at risk for optic nerve stroke, I would not put them on the drug. So again, not everyone is at risk for optic nerve stroke. These are the three risk factors. Small crowded optic nerve with a cup to disc ratio of less than 0.3, sleep apnea, and also poorly controlled diabetes. So in just this past week, I had two patients considering going on these drugs and I said, please do not go on these drugs because it is too risky for you. Definitely, if you're considering the drugs, talk to your doctor, talk to your eye doctor about whether this may put you at risk for vision loss from optic nerve stroke. And if really, if you're not sure, if your eye doctor's not sure, go see a neuro-ophthalmologist and they can help out in making this important decision. It's not one to be taken lightly. Food for thought. Let me know what you think in the comments.